If you enjoy what you're about to watch, because look at this handsome fellow right here, you should hit that like button. You know, because if you do that, it helps us in the algorithm. You get to see more of these things. They'll do more interviews. It's fire. Let's get into it. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to another edition of the Boogie Zone Community Class interviews it's really never that heavy and the boobs are never this big but tonight we have big yes tonight. clay bones and knock it yeah you know as the face of your sanity <laughs> through the pandemic steezy the face of steezy unfortunately <laughs> this is the face of your sanity <laughs> pimples and all okay. hey hey but everyone loved it Thank you very, very much for everything that you were able to do. You and your team at Steezy were able to bring everybody what, well, dancers literally owe every last bit of their movement to you and oh, no. your team. Like, there was nothing. When everything got shut down, like, COVID said, screw you. And Steezy said, hey guys, we can help. <laughs> Just, Mash that subscribe button. Yes, <laughs> Obliterate that like button. Exactly. So we were great. It was great to have you tonight. It's always great to watch your movement because it's so, it's original. It's a red, originality is like based in like roots. And I love that. Love it. It's, Thank you. It's always one of those things. It's like, this is what we needed. Especially with the, um, <laughs> I don't know who's gremlins. <laughs> Hey, I'm trying to have an interview. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that we put the gremlins into shoeboxes, yes. there's no more water on them. <laughs> but I um, wanted to ask you, uh, one of the first things that I wanted to ask you was, how did you guys manage the influx and flooding of the, what we want to call it, the desire or the necessity for Steezy's services uh, once everything started up? How do we manage the influx, like pandemic vibes you're saying? Yeah, like when Man. everything shut down and Steezy was like, hey, we offer online classes. How did you guys handle like the, all of the traffic and everything that probably shot your way? I think the biggest thing was that it's not like we planned for the pandemic and mm. we actually weren't very reactive. Mm. Um, and I think that's what every other teacher had to do, unfortunately. Everyone had to like, shoot, well, I'm, I don't have a studio. I, I can't teach in person. I guess, I guess I'll do Zoom. And everyone yeah. had to sort of like Hollywood, they had to Jerry Witt rig up a, a method of teaching. But yeah. for us, it's been since, what, 2014-ish? that we've been doing this. Yeah. Um, you know, we built Steezy out of our backyard and yeah. like my mom was making curry for us. Like it was, it was, it was, it was yeah, yeah. We called it curry days. Curry's delicious. Yeah, it was a good time. But like, we just had this, we've been working on this for, for a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. And through, you know, through a lot of our predecessors, like um, Boogie Zone forums, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, and a lot of people who were, was it bboy.org? Was that what it was? Yeah, yeah, like just these early days. Yeah. And we knew that there was a desire for people to learn dance, not just within the Southern California region. Yeah. And so because we started building that ahead of time, when the pandemic came, we we're like, oh, well, the infrastructure is already there. Yeah. And all of a sudden people just flooded in. And we're yeah. like, wow, this is crazy, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> and like, we, we're obviously proud and confident of our, of our work. Yeah. But I think that, like I said, the foundation was already there. We were already doing what we wanted to do, mm -hmm. you know, make dance the next big sporting fitness category is still one of our goals, but we wanted mm -hmm. to, I, I always make the joke, make the world a dancier place. Yeah. This is it's a silly, but great phrase to me. And mm -hmm. I think we were already doing that. So we didn't really manage anything differently than we normally thought we would have, you know? Yeah. Still make videos we love. Exactly. Still make classes with cool technology and such. And, try to keep bringing in the people that we've always respected. So, yeah. Yeah, I think does that answer your question? It does, it does. Yeah. <laughs> so um, how do you feel that it's, how do you keep it fun for yourself? 
is it uh, more of the environment or is it who you're bringing in or is it you challenging yourself to say, okay, what category can we do this, this week? Or like, how do you keep it fresh? There's so many things. There's, there's so many, like running, running a company, I say running, not as if I run the whole company, but being a, a integral part of, of something that's so living, breathing and, and erratic. It is a yeah. startup Yeah. and it's a tech startup. Technically mm -hmm. we're like a Silicon Valley backed tech company. Yeah. but we're a dance tech company. So all these things make it wild and different, yeah. um, but it's what makes it so appealing. There's always something new every day. There's always some some new you know, music thing or mm -hmm. an artist that's interested in working with us or dancers that we've, like I said, we've always looked up to that are like, I'd love to teach you. And I'm like, wow, I watched you when I first started dancing. Yeah. So I think I still get thrill and excitement um, being able to, to work in an environment like that. It also gets very overwhelming. I like to, to kind of keep my track in one specific place. Yeah. And it's hard to hop around. Uh, but really the best thing, it's it's always the people. I love my coworkers. They're they're some of my closest friends. Mm -hmm. And they weren't friends before Steezy. I didn't know any of the people before that. Everyone, all the original four, me, Connor, Evan, Jesse, mm -hmm. all became friends through wanting to build Steezy. But yeah. we didn't know each other before that. So it's a, it's a really cool place and it's the only place that you can like hop out of your chair and dance in space and it's like not out of yeah. the ordinary and everyone yeah. just joins in or you walk over to the room and you get to see your favorite dancer or some musical artist, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, <laughs> exactly. it's just fire. So I think I, I am allowed to be authentic and be myself in, mm -hmm. my, in the space at work and feel at home. Yeah. And there's no better feeling than that because I'm surrounded by people I love as well. So I don't have to do much to keep it fresh. I think yeah. we all help each other to keep it fresh and fun. Nice, nice. Yeah. So can you talk about, well, like you said, keeping, you get to be your authentic self. That can be said very much of your dance style. I was kind of telling someone, um, for me, it's as if you crafted a knife, like a sharp knife out of butter, <laughs> and then the person runs themselves into it. That's pretty much what your style is like. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. It's like smooth. <laughs> oh, it's so sharp. No, that's dairy oh, in my so stomach. Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did you cultivate this style that you have of dance? Because it obviously looks like you love it and it comes off so effortlessly that it's, there's some people that have a hard time catching it. Speaking of which, uh, Miss, Kai Boogie from um, the Bay Area came down to take Clay's class. Loved watching you, little lady. <laughs> you gonna do real big things. Oh, yeah. Probably still in a really small frame, but <laughs> nice meeting you tonight. But Absolutely. back to the question. Yeah. <laughs> Man, um, I was just bad at doing other people's stuff. <laughs> like plain and simple. Yeah. Especially during high school. I went to Diamond Bar High School mm -hmm. and we were all just nerdy, like Asian kids. And a lot of the other schools back in those years had um, like a bunch of Filipino kids. And yeah. the Filipino kids were swaggy as heck, they were fire. And I always wished I could do that. And I just couldn't, my body, I, I didn't have the foundation of that. I also yeah. didn't listen to a lot of hip hop music growing up, surprisingly. I'm from Atlanta, but mm. I listened to like My Chemical Romance and like stuff like that. So I, <laughs> I think like musically, a lot of the things that I like wanted to do actually weren't in my body, but the other songs that I loved had a lot of technicalities. Yeah. yeah. I, I really love like early like electro. I like like Porter Robinson in his early days, Zed in his early days. Yeah. Really punchy, intense music. Yeah. Um, and and then of course these these things like Slipknot, My Chemical Romance, Can't Get Disco. And I love how interesting these beats were. And I love dancing to that type of music. Music often, more often than almost anything else, it, it's what informs the dancing, right? Yeah. And so I think that because I wasn't as interested in dancing to things like hip hop, like a lot of my peers, I ended up learning what they kind of do, especially with like funk with popping, yeah. but never fitting it to G-funk. Always fitting it to the songs that I like dancing to. Yeah. And then that ended up meshing and melding that. And then of course, just like anyone else with with um, with their styles, you know, it's it's anime, it's TV shows, it's, <laughs> it's uh, a funny joke. It's, um, I love puns, I love wordplay all the time. Yeah. And my mind, like I can't help it. Like I have to stop myself 
from making a lot of puns in certain situations. <laughs> so I think that dance is a great outlet for that. Yeah. It allows me to just make the pun and yeah. be silly. And it doesn't matter if it's a bad joke because it's dance, you know? Exactly. Um, so yeah, I think like I'm able to to be myself and have fun with it. And mm. like, what what other place can you do that on such a large platform and have other people want to take in who you are mm. into their bodies for like an hour and a half and think about that and like challenge themselves to learn you. Yeah, that's so cool. Dance yeah. is so special in that way. Yeah, so, yeah. I'd say that's why. Nice, nice. So. I have a question actually. Yeah. Okay, so I'm wondering what could dance studios, not just in South California, but across the country and potentially the world, how could they use social media to bring new students to their dance studios oh, in their that areas? That's actually part of my next oh, question. Man. <laughs> man, these. Okay. So. <laughs> It feels weird for me to say to, to to like speak on this because I know that like I'm at Steezy and stuff, but again, I'm the director of video at Steezy. Mm -hmm. Yes, I make a lot of content and I've been doing that for a while and it's very dance centric. Mm -hmm. But like I'm not I've never ran a dance studio. Yeah. It's a very different business. Very different. Right? Um and I'm not some expert marketer either. I just like making good content. Mm -hmm. I think one plain and simple thing is that many dance studios have antiquated ways of thinking, mm -hmm. right? Like this is this is where the hot takes come out. I think there's antiquated <laughs> ways of thinking. I think that studios sh should continue to expand their beginner class um, uh, scheduling, um, but they need to advertise that in a way that's digestible and accessible. Mm -hmm. So one thing, when you think about Steezy, like early days, what were we doing? We're posting some Ryan Puspo, some Ray Hata. And what are people watching to do? Whoa, I want to dance like that, that's sick. And then they land in the class and like this, I could never. <laughs> and then what do they do? They fall into the beginner classes. We yeah. find a way to trickle people in. And it's not, that's just one small yeah. thing. But a lot of people, they love dance. They think it's so cool, but it doesn't feel accessible. And also when you're labeling your class as beginner class number one, top five, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Who like, you know, Susie age 40 in Ohio, looking at that is not going to go, oh yes, beginner class number one taught by this person. <laughs> it's, it's the song. Yeah. It's the energy exactly. of, a, of a teacher. Those are the things that need to be highlighted, but it's quite specific to the song and the content type, which is why being a content creator in this current age, mm. you need to know how to feel what you filmed, what you're hearing, and you need to be able to deliver that to an audience and it can't be templatized. And that's a really hard thing mm -hmm. because what we want is we want to have a playbook. We want yeah. things to be systematized because then it's, you can recreate it. Exactly. And in this age, there are loose formats that you can use, but you need to not get more creative, but be more directive with the content of, and how it feels because your audience is quite specific. For dance studios, your biggest money maker is going to be parents with kids, <laughs> right? <laughs> parents have money, kids want to take it. If they see their kid enjoying it so much, they see them doing that. Like if you're, if you're allowed to, I don't know the social media laws around like posting kids and such, but yeah. if you can post the kids having such a good time, their parents want their kids to be around good influences, yeah. Uh, music that's appropriate for, for children mm -hmm. um, and having a blast and if they know that they're gonna keep sending their kid there this is this is um, this is like the coolest form of daycare that ever exists <laughs> and I think if you can make it feel that way yeah. but then also cater to the other audience that comes in and does the advanced pieces so that everyone can go that's tight and then the other people come in and go that's a great foundation for my kid and you 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 have this like that like you know one percent of the world that's advanced to make it yeah, seem hype exactly. the 99 percent which is actually paying money and putting their kids in and keeping this going so yeah. make content that makes people feel what that specific type of class mm -hmm. um should be making them feel yeah yeah it's, it's a kind of crazy answer but that's no, my that's my non-expert attempt at answering <laughs> that <laughs> kind of the exact information that i was looking for like, that was yeah. a great answer yeah. exactly Last question. Yeah. So, um, 
on the platform on Steezy. Yeah. You have choreographer after choreographer after style after style after challenge after like uh, you had a good friend of mine, Aubrey Aris, um, do a video like two months ago. Aubrey could outdance the majority of people that yeah. I've ever seen in my life, especially yes. including myself. She is. And you just had her there for Okay, well, I'm gonna teach the Latin rhythms, and yeah. yeah. And um, it's interesting for me to see who all you pull to come on the Steezy to um, share their knowledge. Mm -hmm. So now I have to ask you, maybe it's a difficult, uh, difficult answer, maybe it isn't. Um, of the different styles and levels, of the dancers that you all have frequenting there, mm -hmm. um, who has been the easiest to flow between style and level in teaching? Karen Chuang. Really? Karen Chuang is probably one of the most well-spoken, mm -hmm. lovely humans I've ever met. And her way of explaining advanced complex techniques and feelings and making it so digestible on all levels is pretty amazing. She's like a scientist with it. Um, I think Karen Trong is, is such a wonderful instructor. Um, yeah, she'd probably be my like first pick, first one to come, come to my mind. She teaches our um, contemporary program. She is just a beast. Yeah. 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 Karen Trong. No. Flames. And who's the worst? Who's the worst? Who's the worst? It's gonna be Brian Puspos. It's gonna be Brian Puspos. You know why? It's because <laughs> his shorts are too short. That's really why. Yeah. No, Brian. Is he still panting himself? Uh, not in the office. No, because we got cameras and we know we're black and him. Yeah. I love Brian so much. Brian is such a such a joy to be around. Whenever, yeah. he's, whenever he's in the office, it's like such a good time. I remember like I popped around the corner because he was coming to the office quite a bit and I was never in the office during that time. And one day I show up, I turn around the corner, he's like, ah! he like freaks out. He's like, ah! Ah! I'm like, Hi. But you know what's funny? It's like, like I, it's so cool <laughs> that I get to be like friends with these people. Because yeah. again, I watched Ryan Puspos in my first year of dancing. I watched, I remember like watching like I think like senior year, was senior year of high school, like that was it the urban dance camp thing of like Scott Forsyth, you know, yeah. when he had no beard and <laughs> no beard, no swag. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no. And, and I just remember being like so impressed with these people. I remember when we first got Rie Hata and I just like I shat my pants because yeah. I was like, these are so like, I'm man, I just feel eternally blessed that I get to be around these people that I've looked up to for so long Yeah, and be, be pedestrian with them. That's the, I think like everyone's goal shouldn't be, I want to, I want to like be able to teach with these people. It should be, I just want to be at a place where we're all, we all respect each other enough that we can just be friends. <laughs> no, that's just my goal. I, I enjoy that. You have whatever goal you want, but yeah, yeah it's fun. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with us tonight. Thank you for blessing the, the floor. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, definitely, man. It's always it, the last time it was like this movement is so classic because <laughs> it's nobody does it like this. And that right there is like for me, it's um, that's what the essence of dance is. Oh. And actually seeing someone like you said, you put you on someone else and see how they how they take it. Yeah, and it's like, oh, OK, that's actually a pretty sharp knife made of butter. <laughs> Then run yourself you run into the, Yeah, you run yourself ah! into, Yeah, that's the way. <laughs> oh, did, did it break? <laughs> exactly. And once again, um, thank you all for joining us for another edition of the interviews. Thank you for coming to class. Um, smash that subscribe button to Steezy. Definitely, if you are not subscribed to Boogie Zone TV, you should be because you should be watching this because you know that we're putting it up. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's an awkward thing yeah. to talk to people who don't. No. I don't know if they're listening or not. They're listening. They could be. Yeah. Or the they could just be on mute. Hopefully yeah. it's not. Did you do in the beginning of this video? Captions. Use this clip right here. It's like if you enjoy what you're about to watch, just look at this handsome fella right here. You should hit the like button. You know, because if you do that helps us in the algorithm, you have to see more of these things, we'll do more interviews, it's fine. Let's get into it. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> a little early, early call to action, you know? Exactly. They're not, they're not gonna like it at the end of the video, but. Probably not. You gotta, you gotta remind them. Hey, it's a hard thing. You guys should right. shut up. But <laughs> also, <laughs> join us once again next week. I'm Philly Mo Really Though. We out. <laughs>